marking 21 years of in-depth journalism. This is Louisiana's statewide news magazine. With reports tonight from Jeff Dewey and Diana Baker. From LPB, here's Robert Collins. Good evening. This week is the 30th birthday of Codafil, the group dedicated to preserving the use of the French language in Louisiana. And we will explore where the organization has been and where it plans to go in the future a bit later in our program. Correspondent Diana Baker refreshes our recollection about how Codafil came to be and what it's been up to since it came into being. Laissons un silence de cercueil sauvage, étouffons inspiration, enlevons tout, même la conception de la fin subie. Zachary Richard is one of Louisiana's most famous musicians. His lyrics read like poetry. His poetry is in Cajun French. Like many of our state's traditions, the very language is in danger of disappearing. But there's hope that future generations will understand that if we lose our language, we lose ourselves. Listen, Joe. The only great hour to you is to see less parler en français. As illustrated in the stage play about Cajun culture, there was a time when children were punished for speaking their native French. Being described as a Cajun was an insult, a slur. Thirty years ago, the state constitution forbade the use of French in public schools. But in 1968, with the help of Governor John McKithen, the legislature created CODAFIL, an acronym for the Council for the Development of French in Louisiana. Warren Perrin is former CODAFIL director. As we consider these 30 years that CODAFIL has been in existence, I think it's, uh, it's very important for us to continue to realize that language is the method by which we transmit a culture to succeeding generations. And I think that the successes that CODAFIL has experienced in the uh, domain of education is very clear. Uh, au Canada, 80,000 school uh, children every day. The French immersion programs are continuing uh, to expand throughout the state and are very, very popular. But something that's very difficult to measure, and yet I think it's very tangible, is the pride that has been restored to Louisiana citizens in their French heritage. And I think that is due directly to the efforts of Codafield during the last 30 years. In Eunice, a weekly Cajun variety show features a range of Cajun themes, from humor to craft demonstrations to, of course, the unmistakable sounds of Cajun and Zydeco. I go out and ask if there's anybody visiting from outside the state because we like to let people know. The host for this extravaganza is head of USL's Department of Modern Languages, Barry Ansele. In 1974, Codafil sponsored the first Cajun Music Festival. And that was a very unusual event. Nobody had ever done anything like this before, calling attention to the value of one of our remarkable cultural resources. Nobody knew how to do it. Nobody knew what the, what the effects of it was going to be. And what happened was, Codafil realized that there was a cultural side to its movement. Uh, up until then, it had been very language-only oriented. Uh, it tapped into a grassroots, grassroots movement uh, strength for the first time. The second thing was that uh, the older people in this area realized that their culture was of value. Uh, it, had, uh, it, had, it had something to contribute to the future. And the third thing that uh, happened was that a whole group of young musicians who had up until then uh, only had uh, the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and Elvis Presley and everybody else and popular music to imitate uh, realized that there was a, an, an immensely valuable cultural resource here 
uh, and that they could uh, they could play the music of their own heritage. One of the first efforts to preserve French was to import French teachers from Belgium and France, but they spoke a modern tongue. The Cajun language had been isolated for more than 300 years and was just too different. Some teachers couldn't understand the children. Today, classes teach what educators call immersion study, like this Lake Charles French class. More than 2,000 students are learning the old language in codafil sponsored classes. We had had a discussion for years about the importance of teaching French in Louisiana in a way that respected the way French was spoken in Louisiana. Uh, not only importing it from outside. And James DiMaggio, the chairman of Crotophil, uh, was resisting this. He felt like teaching Cajun French was not even possible. He kept saying, it's an oral language. It doesn't even have a written form. It has no grammar, it has no validity. And we argued with him for years uh, about the philosophy, uh, the, the, the uh, theory of this. And suddenly one day I, I realized we're not going to talk him into this. We have to show him something. So I got together with, uh, with Zachary Richard and Kenneth Richard and several other uh, people that I knew had written some things. And we convinced Zachary Richard's music publisher in Montreal to do us a favor to publish the book called Crisou Bayou. When I received the first advanced copy, I literally walked into James DiMaggio's office with it behind my back. Mon atout, si on jouait à la bourre. And uh, I knew James, uh, Mr. DiMaggio was going to, uh, to goad me once again, as he always did, uh, t telling me how we couldn't possibly teach Cajun French uh, in the schools because it was an oral language. It had no written form. And at that point, I plopped it on his desk, uh, like a trump card. <laughs> and he said, what's this? I said, you can't say that anymore. Now it is written. Fort et résonnant, comme le cri d'un cocodrille au fond du marais. Comme le roi des cocodries, ses poumons remplis de musique. Splendide comme le cri d'un furzé, courtisant le soir. Comme un marlion au fin fond du ciel. Je suis parti pour aller, pour chercher des mal de poing. Right. Educators and anthropologists agree a process of self-discovery takes time. Thirty years later, in places like Mamou, Celebrating Mardi Gras is a proud event. What was once backwoods, the world now comes to see is more than simply quaint, but a powerfully authentic and unique way of life. David Cheramy is Codafil's new director. When I was a little boy growing up in Bayou Lafourche, and my prospects of ever learning to speak French were very dim. I had just started a little bit with my grandfather, but he died. And it's rather ironic that that same summer that he died was when the Codafil uh, was founded by uh, James Domangeau. Years later, I was able to take advantage of the Codafil programs and learn to speak French and get in touch again with my heritage and my culture. And I was able to come back and speak with my, my grandmothers, who uh, were both still living at that time, who have since passed away also. And that's something that really it touches me close at home, to think that we have this whole generation of Francophones, uh, native-speaking Francophones here in Louisiana, who are now gone. But we have to live on for the future. And that's an exciting thought for me, that, to think that today, Somewhere in Louisiana schools, there's a little boy or a little girl who one day is going to grow up and learn to speak French and be proud of his or her heritage here in South Louisiana. Someday, we won't think it unusual to hear French. That's just part of the dream of Codafil. Thirty years later, and for years to come. Our thanks to Zachary Richard for his time and his contribution in reading uh, for our report. William Arsenault, for the last 30 years, has been a leading force in Codafil, and we are delighted to have him join us this evening. Bill, good Thank to you, see Bob. you. Thank you wear many hats. Uh, many people know you as having uh, been intimately involved in higher education in this state for a long number of years, too. But the whole time you've been a subversive for Codafil. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, Governor John McKithen originally appointed me to the board of Codafil, and then uh, every governor since then has uh, has done the same. So uh, I'm very uh, pleased that they've done that, and proud to have uh, to serve the state and to serve a movement that I believe in a great deal, and and that that is my life, it is my heritage, it is my family. So it's it's a, it's a very personal thing for me. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you don't have any accent. Oh, uh, yes, I do. <laughs> you just have to leave Louisiana to, for people to catch it. <laughs> Maybe I just can't yeah, hear it yeah. anymore. Um, well, the, uh, the, the history that Diana <laughs> alluded to uh, 30 years ago, uh, it's almost hard for us to conjure that up now when being Cajun was a bad thing. That was pejorative. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's very unusual. My parents uh, experienced that. My parents uh, 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 went to public schools in Louisiana, and they were forbidden uh, under pain of corporal punishment uh, from speaking the French language. And, of course, it was all this, uh, this idea that in order to be a good American, you had to speak English, and you couldn't speak any other language. Uh, but let me back up a little bit, because it's very interesting. It just dawned on me that uh, uh, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of, of Cotofield this year. Uh, 1998, but next year, in 1999, we celebrate the 300th anniversary of the founding of Louisiana by the French. And so if Louisiana is 300 years old, both as a colony and a state, probably for more than, probably two-thirds of its existence, French was the dominant language in Louisiana. It's only been in modern times, so to speak, historically speaking, of course, where that has not been the case. And our, our, our goal, of course, is to preserve what we have and promote additional people uh, speaking French. Well, certainly, uh, everybody now knows about Cajun cuisine. Everybody knows about Cajun music. It's the strangest uh, thing. You know, every peop you know uh, people outside of Louisiana say, uh, you know, if you're from New Orleans or Shreveport, you know, you're Cajun. You know, it's almost generic. Yeah. But, but I'm interested in this. Um, historically, o over the years and the centuries, mm -hmm. languages in our world have died out. We seem to be getting fewer and fewer languages that are actually used. And although French is taught in the schools, are we losing people who actually speak French in Louisiana on a daily basis? Yes, we are. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. And that was one of the reasons why Jimmy DiMaggio 30 years ago tried to, uh, didn't try, uh, move to create uh, this organization to try to stop that trend. If you look at other uh, immigrant or refugee groups that settled America, the Germans in the Midwest, uh, the Irish and the Italians in the Northeast, uh, their language is completely, completely gone. You can't find anybody, I don't think, in the Midwest who continues to speak German or Italians in, in Boston who continue to, who, who speak Italian. By and large, all of those, and, and many Oriental languages have also been lost. Uh, we are unique here in Louisiana to the degree that we, we have retained our first language, the language of our mother country. So in a sense, uh, you've made a lot of progress on the one hand, and on the other hand, you're losing ground. Yeah. So, so where does Cotofil go in the future? I know the job's not done. Oh, no, the job will, I don't, I don't think the job will ever be done. And clearly, this is an ongoing battle. Uh, it, actually, it's an ongoing war. We've, we've won a few battles. We've lost a few battles. But the war continues. The... Uh, I think we have some things that are happening in the country that's, that will benefit uh, our efforts. There is a, there is a huge uh, growing Hispanic population in the United States, Florida, California, Texas, uh, uh, the Southwest, with, with a strong uh, Spanish-speaking uh, influence and component. Uh, and with that, they bring the desire for second language training. And I think we can benefit from that, because I think a lot of people if given the opportunity to choose a foreign language, might want to, might want to choose French. And I think, I think we can export Code of Field. In fact, we already have. Mr. DiMaggio was instrumental in founding a similar organization in New England called the Council for the Development of French in New England. And it has its own acronym. And uh, they're in the business of essentially doing the same thing in the New England states that we're doing here. Well, Bill Arsenault, uh, happy birthday to Cota Phil, and, and I know the president uh, now is Warren Perrin, right. and I'm certainly will be hearing from Warren and, and hearing more from you, but thank you for coming by and visiting. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Well, that is our program for this evening. Next week, we'll look into something that sounds too good to be true. Will the state really pay the whole tuition bill for your son and daughter's college tuition if they make decent grades in school? The plan to provide free tuition for every student with good grades next week. Plus, Jeff Dewey takes us to a spooky Haitian voodoo show at the New Orleans Museum of Art. Till next week, that's the state we're in. We'd like to hear from you. Write Louisiana the state we're in. 
7733 Perkins Road in Baton Rouge. Or call LPD toll-free. We're on the internet at this address.